ASRock, we've got so many motherboards. So let's check them out. All right, first off, I want to take a look at some of the, uh, the bay trail options down here. Now, um, here we've got a couple bay trail options with SO dims, uh, and then of course, uh, your one speed PCI Express slot, but check it out over here. Over here, we've got the full size you know, dims. So you can install DDR3 right there. And uh, this one has 1X, 16X, and another 1X. So there's a lot of interesting options you can do with this. You know, the, the bay trail is really fast. It's, it doesn't compete with like a, a you know, 1150, um, socket 1150, but still really fast. Then we've got a lot of Z97 boards, but a lot of you guys have already seen those. What you haven't seen is the X99. They're showing off the Extreme 4 and also the Extreme 6, and they're doing what it looks like everyone's doing now. They're doing the audio that's separated here from the rest of the PCB. Uh, Purity sound, special audio capacitors, that's going on. We've got DDR4 on board. There's the massive socket 2011. Power delivery options, it looks like they haven't fully uh, finished this board yet because there's no, um, you know, we don't have any fancy heat sink on top of the, uh, the MOSFETs or the you know, capacitors or anything like that. There's no fancy heat sink going on there, so I'm imagining that's gonna get uh, you know, refinished. No heat sink down here on the bottom either, but we can see you know, just everything that's going on here. Also wanna note, it looks like they have um, two different BIOS chips. Yeah, if, if that's what that is, it looks like two different BIOS chips that are removable. Now, the uh, Extreme 99, now you see here we have the uh, two BIOS chips as well on there. Um, you know, I, I thought we were going to have more PCI Express expansion slots with the Extreme 6, but I guess we'll have to go for something crazier than that. We do have a little extra power here, a uh, Molex connector there for adding extra power to the PCI Express lanes. Um, the first slot here, you know, nothing in the way. There's only one slot, then they skip a slot because you're going to put a graphics card there, obviously. Then we have a M.2 uh, slot right there. Again, we've got the Purity Sound, special audio capacitors right here, uh, slightly larger than the Extreme four with the audio capacitors. Let's take a look up here at the power delivery system. They do have the premium alloy chokes on there as well. And again, it looks like they do not have the, um, you know, any cooling units there on top just yet. So um, I haven't played with ASRock Cloud, but they've got a port specially for that. And there's, you know, dual uh, ports on here, Intel Gigabit uh, Ethernet. So looking like a pretty interesting board. Can't wait till those come out. And if you guys want to see, check out the Z97 stuff just to see, they've got the formula. Of course, that's for overclocking. Again, super alloy power all going on there. Um, we've got a couple of different models of that, ATX and micro ATX. And then they've got all the killer line and the fatal fatality stuff over here. Um, there's actually a ton of options for um, Z97, but they also have like, the B85, which was more of a, a business class motherboard. And we took a look at this one, but it's kind of cool to see this here. It's, it's really fast, but you know, it's not Z97. It just lowers the price point, but they've also given you tons of the gaming features with the uh, business class motherboard. So then we've got the H97. Again, gonna be a little bit lower lower cost, but not that much lower in speed. So tons of options with the ASRock motherboards. Let's go take a look at some of their uh, more, I guess, server grade stuff, shall we? These are all LGA 2011 ASRock uh, dual socket motherboards, um, which are pretty nice. They're pretty snazzy. They got some really cool things. Most of them got like gigabit LAN, gigabit LAN. This one here I want to point out because not only does it have 10 gig copper, it's also got two 10 gig fiber slots, which are pretty nifty. And again, you've got the uh, eight uh, dims per socket for, for memory, and you got two PCI Express slots. Uh, and then even over here, you've got SAS 3. I'm sorry, these are SAS 2 connectors. And uh, yeah, this is pretty snazzy. Moving right along, all Xeon boards. Uh, this is like a half rack, uh, half depth. Uh, looks like it could be blade structures. They've got some of these that are blade connectings. I'm not sure what they would go into right offhand, but these are a CEB, and this is just a half uh, form factor. And the other ones over there are EEB form factors. Moving over to the single uh, single socket workstations, uh, both the server and workstations. Um, kind of the same setups where you got a lot of uh, DDR3 in this one here. Uh, you got eight SATA 2 ports and two SATA 3 ports with a Marvell SATA 2, I'm sorry, SATA 3 connectors as well. And it looks like it's got some SAS in here as in addition. Uh, this one down here is pretty nifty because we've got SAS 3 here and you got SATA 2 and SATA 3 connectors as well. Half width systems. We've got down to some of these things are really nifty. Like this is a performance NAS. This is the E3C226D2I. It's got a lot of connectors storage. It's got six, six SATA 3 ports in this baby here, uh, which is really great for mini ITX NAS running the, uh, this is Intel 1150 socket for fifth generation. USB, you saw your OS right there. Mm hmm. Uh, we got Aviton cold storage. We've actually done a review on this one here. This one's got the 12 SATA connectors. Four of them are SATA 2, the rest are SATA 3. Um, some of the SATA 3s are Intel chipsets, the rest of them are Marvell's chipsets. 
Uh, and then we've got some other nifty home NAS based systems, all running Xeons, or these ones here are Atoms, and this is the Abaton. Again, this one here's got six, I'm sorry, you got five SATA 3 and then two SATA 2s. No, sorry, five SATA 2s, two SATA 3s. And we got order workstations, GPU solutions. This one's great because it's got up to four. Uh, four graphics cards you can put in there. They've got them spaced out nicely. You can put whatever you want in there. I mean, yeah, I'm going to be saying this one is designed to have... It's It's got the spacing four GPUs, yeah. for four GPUs. Um, and then this one here is a high-end workstation where you got the CPU socket. What are we running here? This is 1150. And you've got, again, space for PCI, PCI, uh, PCI Express 1X, and then uh, 16s. It's a lot of crazy cool stuff that uh, ASRock's got going on here. Uh, I'm hoping to see some of these in a in a test bench at some point. We've checked out a lot of different NASs. We've made our own NAS, but I uh, found something new here at uh, Computex called Acer Storm, and they make several different units for enterprise-grade stuff, for home users, for power users. Uh, this unit here is uh, part of their six series, the AS 608T. See, we have um, eight different bays here. And this has a full computer inside with HDMI output. And over here is the interface on the screen. Uh, Pre-installed, you get lots of different apps. And um, there's even an app central where you can go and download more apps. Um, and, you know, if, if, you, if someone out there is creating an app or looking for a new app or whatever, they're going to be adding new apps to this. But there's a lot that you can already do with this. I mean, of course, you've got the XBMC uh, File Explorer, uh, DLNA enabled as well. Let me just go ahead and uh, take a look on over here. Uh, she, this can be a uh, PNP media server, even got PHP, my admin, a Dropbox app, uh, WordPress, Google Drive, all kinds of things. And as you can see, so, uh, some of these things are in beta. So check this out. I'm using a, a remote here with this. And it's just running over here on the uh, 604T. That's got four bays. Right there, it's running on this little. Then there's a two bay version. They all have the same software. So you could just sit on your couch and use this as, like a little computer that's connected to your TV, but it's got all your stuff on it. And then you can share it all the way through the house with the XBMC, and this one actually has some, some other apps on it. For instance, we've got surveillance app. Sit down and use Chrome or YouTube or whatever, but let me show you the surveillance app here. Opening that up. That's right, this thing can uh, be used for surveillance, hook up cameras to it. Uh, I guess IP cameras will work with this. They do support Wi-Fi with the, a Wi-Fi dongle, so really cool. Go back to my home now. So you got HDMI running out of that. So this has an HDMI out. They're running it through an amplifier. It's got full 5.1 channel surround. This thing's kind of kind of crazy. Let's go ahead and check out some of the videos. Why not? We're, we're here hanging out. We may as well watch some videos. There we go. Breaking Bad. There we go. Good. All right, cool. we got Breaking Bad going on here. Sweet. So now we're just watching this straight from the NAS. It's kind of blowing my mind. It's really just almost too easy. Very cool. Uh, I also want to note that um, in the uh, interface, you can set this up to launch whatever application. So when you first turn it on, if you just want it to go straight to XBMC, it'll do that. Or if you, maybe you've got a, something that you need surveillance. When you first turn it on, it'll open up the surveillance. I want to show you guys a little bit more about the uh, the software here. This is the surveillance software. Check this out. You can actually import a map. So you, you got the map in there. You didn't make the map in this software, but you imported your map. And then you can place your cameras so that, you know, the, on the map so that you'll know where they are. And then you say like, hey, I want to see what's going on with this camera here. You click it. It connects to it. A few seconds later, it should pop up, and there is that camera. Not really pointed at anything. That's kind of a boring camera. Let's go see what's going on in this camera. How about this camera right here? There we go. Just different cameras pointing in different directions. And look how many cameras this thing can support. It's kind of crazy. All IP cameras, of course. So pretty cool uh, uh, solution. And also, if you're, you're traveling or whatever, you can just hop on your laptop and log into your NAS remotely and check out your surveillance software. And also from your mobile phone. I mean, you, you can pretty much do everything from your mobile phone. You can even take pictures on your mobile phone and have that sync straight to your NAS. It's kind of hurting my head. Special thanks to Corsair, our sponsor here at Computex. Be sure to check out all of our coverage, including this. This is the Force LX. Uh, these SSDs are insanely affordable. They're slightly slower than Sandforce based models and other models, but they are, um, you know, just a ton of capacity for almost free. So check out our coverage or else. Mm -hmm.